Bhagavad Gita, text 4.8 For the protection of the saintly and the destruction of evildoers, as well as for the purpose of establishing Dharma, I manifest in every age. Because Krishna's saintly devotees are beyond the joy and suffering of this world, the only suffering they undergo is the pain of separation from him that they feel in his absence, the dark night of the soul. Thus Krishna appears to mitigate their spiritual anguish. Establishing Dharma and subduing the unrighteous come as a byproduct of this principal reason for Krishna's descent. The punishment of the wicked has the goal of correcting their behavior and removing them from the world. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada comments that Krishna has many agents who are capable of dealing with the unrighteous, and thus his primary reason for descending involves his dealings with his devotees. Vishwanath Chakravarti points out that Krishna's apparent punishment of the unrighteous is in fact an act of mercy, because the final result of this punishment is liberation. However, it is worth mentioning that the specific type of liberation, Sayujya Mukti, attained by the unrighteous through Krishna's chastisement, is undesirable for the devotees. The unrighteous, who are killed by Krishna, experience not only the death of their gross material body, but the demise of their subtle body as well. The subtle body carries the soul from one gross body to another. The subtle body, consisting of a state of mind, is the basis of the gross body one acquires in the next life. When the subtle body of the unrighteous person is destroyed, that person's attitude towards Krishna immediately changes, for his opposition to Krishna was a product of his subtle body, his unrighteous disposition. On the demise of the subtle body, his hostility towards Krishna is transformed into love for Krishna. Thus, at the moment of death, he sees Krishna as the greatest object of affection. His liberation is not directly a result of being killed by Krishna, but rather a result of his newfound love for him. This is the opinion of Baladeva Vidyabhushana, voiced in his Govinda Basya commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Having explained the nature of his descent, Krishna next explains the result of understanding it. <laughs> 